To the naked eye, both these phones look slightly similar. But on today's episode of Review and Review, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and the Samsung S10 Plus. So in my right hand, I have the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and in my left hand, I have the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So today, we're not going into an all-out specs battle because I can just list out both of their specifications on paper and just read it out to you if I wanted to, right? But today, we are going to see which one of these phones is more suited to you the average consumer. So first things first, we're going to talk about the design. So both these phones have round edges and a metallic aluminum frame. Now, if you put them side by side, they look the same. Honestly, they're about the same build, they're about the same size. Even though the S10 Plus has a slightly larger dimension, Huawei Mate 20 Pro is slightly thicker and heavier because it carries a bigger battery at 4,200 mAh, whereas the S10 Plus has a 4,100 mAh. Although, this battery is slightly better because it has lithium polymer and this lithium ion. And I've already talked about why lithium polymer batteries are already better than lithium ion batteries. Now, both these phones have a glass front and back, which means they support wireless charging. And yes, guys, to answer your question, they can actually charge each other. So both these phones have round edges and they have this infinity-looking screen, which means that the screen doesn't actually cut off. It actually just rolls off the side to give it that infinity look. Now, both these phones have USB Type-C ports, but the Samsung S10 Plus wins on this front because it has a headphone jack. And like I said, as long as the phone has a headphone jack, it has a special place in my heart. And on the back of both these phones, we have triple cameras. Now, is this going to be a normal thing? Is this going to be the next big thing? Like, every phone is supposed to have three different cameras. We'll talk about it more later on in the video. But as of right now, are you team punch hole or are you team notch? Now, to be fair, the Samsung S10 Plus does look slightly more futuristic because of the punch hole cutout. Because it's the talk of the town, it's something new. And notches are very 2018. Notches are not a problem anymore. It, I'm so used to it. Technically, it's a black bar to me. It's just part of the phone. And to be honest, the notch does not irritate me as much as the punch hole cutout. Because I would prefer watching a full screen video on the Mate 20 Pro rather than the S10 Plus. Alright, so as you can tell, now both of these phones are pinched to zoom. Which means they take up the whole screen of the phone. So on the Mate 20 Pro, you can actually see like the notch over there on the right side, it just looks like a very big overlapping bar and that's all there is to it. However, on the Samsung S10 Plus, it looks like I have dead pixels on my screen. I mean, it's cool and all but I would prefer watching full screen on the Mate 20 Pro. However, you can choose to zoom out on this and you just have like thick bezels on the side, it has a very big black bar. So at the end of the day, it really just boils down to you. Would you rather have it watch it in full screen with a punch hole cutout or would you have a full screen with an overlapping black notch? It's up to you. Now, both these phones support an AMOLED panel, which means the color is pretty rich, it's very easy on the eyes. However, the Samsung S10 Plus has a thing called the Dynamic AMOLED Display, which means that it's easier on the eyes in blue light. For those of you who use the eye comfort mode on the phones, would actually feel it. But honestly, for me, I don't use the eye comfort mode. So do let me know down in the comment section below if it actually does make a difference because this is actually a tough Fight. Display wise, the Huawei Mate 20 wins just because I just don't like the cutout, honestly. I mean, it's cool and all, we're in the future, cutout, yay! I just don't like it. Alright, so now let's dive in onto the cameras. Both phones have three cameras on the back, and on the front, the Huawei Mate has one singular camera, and the Samsung S10 Plus has two cameras. So the Huawei has a 40 megapixel wide lens, 20 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a telephoto of 8 megapixel. Whereas the Samsung S10 Plus has a 12 megapixel wide lens, 16 megapixels ultra wide lens and a 12 megapixels telephoto lens. The singular selfie camera on the Mate 20 Pro has 24 megapixels and is 26 millimeters wide. And on the Samsung S10 Plus, you get a 10 megapixel with 26 millimeters wide and a slightly wider lens at 8 megapixel at 22 millimeters wide. So this is where things get slightly interesting. Now, on paper, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro does look slightly more impressive with a 40 megapixel camera on the back. And this one with slightly lesser numbers. So to the average person, you're like, ooh, higher megapixels, better quality photos, right? Yes and no. So I conducted a mini poll in the office. I took a couple of photos from both these cameras and put them side by side, each in different scenarios, and got people in the office to actually choose which photo they prefer. To make it fair, I compiled all the photos and put it into my Razer Phone 2 photo gallery so that you know you don't get varying results between the S10 Plus and the Mate 20 Pro. I put it all into one phone and this is how it turned out. Okay. A and B, you look at it and pick which one you like. 
B. I think I like B better. It's just sharper. You can see all the way to Sherilyn, but in A, like, Sherilyn's blur. Okay, I personally prefer B. A is a little bit too saturated. So, like, to me, it doesn't look as close to real life. I would choose A in this sense because like, the photo is much more brighter, more vibrant and you look less distorted than B because in B, you can see that you're a bit distorted but in A, you look normal. So for this one, I'll choose B because first things, A is blurred and second of all, yes, the gloss is better but the problem is its artificial filter it gives itself a more clay skin. Okay, this one I like A more. It looks more pleasant, if that makes sense. Like, the colours look pleasant, they're not as harsh. Personal preference, I would go for A. Quality-wise, I would go for B. If you disregard how I look, I would post B because the contrast is stronger. The blacks are black. For A, the blacks are a little bit grey. Okay, this is really tough. But I would have to choose B. Because for B, like the light, like the shadow, the mid-tones, everything, it's pretty consistent. But for A, it's like, I just feel like the shadows is too pumped up. A itself, if you can see the colour of the skin here, it's actually very, very red. It's actually sharper than B. But the problem is, it's it gives that artificial colour itself, that very unnatural skin tone. Over colour, right, I would prefer B. B has more natural colours. The eyebrows are cute. I like B because it's sharper. The thing is with A is that it blurs out your face a bit and I guess like it's good when you want to take selfies if you don't want like all your imperfections to show. But I like B more just because it looks more real. Okay, for a selfie, B obviously a lot sharper. You can see your pores which I occasionally cannot see in real life, even at this distance. Hands down, I will go for A. But then again, if you want to go for definitions, you want to go for quality, you can go for B. Very straightforward, I'll choose B. When you go take selfie, what matters is being the human itself. A lot of people will say like they don't like it because you can see the pores and everything, but I disagree. Being able to see all these pores right, gives you the ability to actually manipulate the photo how you want it. But for A, yes, it's smoother, but the thing is you lose detail. For the scenery picture, I'm going to pick A because I think it like captures the sharpness of the leaves better. I would choose A. Main reason is the colour. And also because A, the leaves are also a lot sharper. So like I can tell that the de detailing in the photos. B is more of like, okay, here's just a photo. A is like, here's a photo and here's everything in the photo. I'll go for A. When I take photos of, of landscape, I'm very particular about how well the sky is lit up. A looks very, very defined. Like you can see all the all the leaves on the trees and stuff like that. I'll choose B. Actually, A has better dynamic range. However, right, for B, if you zoom it in, this is actually a very good test picture because you can zoom it in, you can see all the leaves here, which is more stitches, it's stitched properly, and you can see all the details here. Means it doesn't have bigger moral problems compared to A. Oh, this one is easy. This one I picked B. A is blurry and the colours are a bit faded, but B is still really vibrant even at night. Uh, okay, I'll choose B. Like for A, right, you can see the graininess of it all. It's generally as a whole not sharp. Definitely, it's so obvious I would go for B because A, like I said, you look very distorted maybe because of the filter of the phone. It gives, like, it adds this soft look. I'll take B. But why I didn't choose A, right, is because if you see, once you bump out shooting at night, especially with no artificial light, so for A, right, it's too much of a magenta, it's not natural itself. This one I'm torn again. The scenery ones are hard because they both focus on different things. Okay, I'll pick B because the lights in the houses are very sharp and I, I feel like I can see straight into the houses. Okay, I'll go with A. Overall, comparing the two, right, I feel that A has the ability to show a little bit more colours. I have to go for A. Some of the detail in the in the photos look very, very soft. But for this part, when it comes to A, when you zoom in, you're still able to see the leaves on the trees. I choose A. Although the colour science is not accurate, apparently the camera puts it on HDR. So if you see here, you can see the details of what is being shot here. But however, for B, it's completely white. Everyone had a different thing to say about different photos. But at the end of the day, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro actually won in this challenge. However, give it to Samsung S10 Plus because apparently the back camera did give out more clarity in the photos and it was nicer to look at. I mean, to each his own, it's really a case-by-case -case scenario. So, time to address the elephant in the room. Android cameras, and Instagram stories. So year after year, Android phones have always proven that their cameras are better than iPhones. However, for some reason, it was still 
look super pixelated and soft on Instagram stories. And for those of you who didn't know this, it is because it is easier to create an app for an iPhone than it is to create an app for an Android phone. Because Androids, you have different processors, you have different mechanics running, you have different screens. And Instagram can only cater to one type of phone. So, I mean, majority of the users out there are iPhones. So, that's why Instagram cater more to iPhones. So, it really doesn't matter how good your Android phones are, honestly. Because it will still look pixelated. And why is that? It's because Android phones on Instagram stories, you don't actually access your camera. You access the screenshot of your camera app. Do you understand what I mean? You don't actually use the camera. You take the screenshot of the camera app and put it onto Instagram stories. Now that's why it looks super pixelated, super slow, and super soft. So earlier today, I also conducted another mini experiment on Instagram on which is the lesser of two evils, which means I posted uh, different stories on both these phones and the results came in. So guys, this is from phone A. Let me know how it looks like, all right? I mean, it's artificial light right now. Zoom in, in. it's kind of slow. There's a slight delay when it comes to zooming in. But yeah, let me know how I look. And this is phone B, still under artificial light, slightly more zoomed in. There's a delay in the zooming in and out again. How do I look now? Ooh, there's a lag, there's a lag. And camera A is actually the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. However, the people that chose B only chose B solely because it has better audio. So when they revealed the Samsung S10 Plus, they did include an Instagram feature on camera, which means you can upload your videos and your photos directly from your camera to your Instagram stories. So this actually got me thinking, does this mean that now only Samsung S10 Plus has direct access from your camera to Instagram stories rather than the whole Instagram Android dilemma of just capturing from your camera screen? After trying it once, yes! Your photos do look sharper right now. This is just a little personal pet peeve. Um, I like to zoom in and zoom out whenever I do my Instagram stories. You know, I just like to zoom in and zoom out. You can't do this on the Samsung S10 Plus. You can't record a video and zoom out. Can't zoom in or out in this mode. You can just record a normal video straight from your camera to Instagram stories. It just automatically goes to my Instagram account and you can just upload it straight from there. I think Samsung has taken a step forward towards the Android dilemma of having not so good Instagram stories on your feed. But you know, kudos to Samsung for doing this. Now we need this on the Huawei too as well or basically every Android phone, right? Can every Android phone just get an Instagram feature on your camera, please? So let's talk about price. The Samsung S10 Plus can range from 1.3K to 2.1K depending on your built-in memory. And you can get the Huawei Mate 20 Pro at $1,348. As of right now, in my opinion, if I were to choose these two phones, I would choose the Huawei Mate 20 Pro over the Samsung. I mean, it's cool because it's new. At the end of the day, it just all boils down to you, the consumer. Would you prefer the Huawei Mate 20 Pro or would you prefer the Samsung S10 Plus? You already know my vote. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of We View and Review. Do remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment down below which phone you prefer. Honestly, I'm actually looking forward to for the P30. Yeah, P30 should be coming out in about a few weeks time honestly alright I'm excited for that alright guys so see you next time bye bye